It's not all that fun to talk about fats, but when you're compiling high fat superfoods, it gets a little bit more interesting. So this is another video in the compilation of seven high fat superfoods. So by the end of this whole series, you're gonna know the seven high fat superfoods that you probably should be adding into your diet. And I don't care whether you're keto, fasting, or whatever, these are going to be powerful. So the whole reason that we're doing this is to teach that different fats have huge, huge, not only micronutrient properties, but they have additional antioxidant properties and different genetic properties, meaning they can have an effect in terms of gene transcription with really interesting things. So we'll talk about all of that. But today we're focusing on olive oil. And the simplicity of olive oil is that it's not just a healthy oil because of the antioxidants and it's heart healthy and all that, I don't know, kind of boring stuff. No, it actually has an effect when it comes down to specific gene transcription. Okay, so really cool transcription factor stuff we're gonna talk about. A little bit nerdy, but it's going to interest you. Hey, I do wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button, and then please do hit that bell icon. That way you turn on notifications and you select all notifications. You never miss a beat whenever we're doing a daily video. And before I start all the nerdy stuff, I wanna give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to Natural Heaven. So these guys are a Hearts of Palm pasta company. Super, super cool stuff. Huge shout out to them. They're a big supporter, big sponsor of this channel, but you do want to check them out. There's a special link and a code down below for you to try them out. It's pasta that's literally made only from hearts of palm. So it's low carb. It's definitely keto friendly, definitely high in fiber, and quite frankly, a great pasta alternative. So check them out after you watch this video. And again, thank you, Natural Heaven. Okay, so there's two big things I wanna focus on with extra virgin olive oil. One being something known as OEA or oleic acid. Okay, oleic acid converts into OEA. We'll talk about that in a second. And then we're gonna talk about specific polyphenols because it's a very unique fat. Okay, each fat kind of has its own different plethora of benefits, but olive oil takes the cake is probably the most healthy, if you wanna call it that. Now it is a monounsaturated fat, okay, which means it's a relatively stable fat. Let me just give you kind of a comparison here. Polyunsaturated fats, although they can be very, very healthy in the case of like fish oil, they are very unstable. Okay, so if you were to leave fish oil out on the table at room temperature, it would go rancid and it would smell bad, right? Okay, it's because it's unstable. That means if you consume a lot of polyunsaturated fats, you run the risk of them being oxidized or going through what's called lipid peroxidation. So although they can be good fats, they are quite unstable. So when you look at a monounsaturated fat, it's a much more stable fat, which means it's less likely to oxidize and less likely to cause potential damage that way. So that's the big thing. Yes, 70% monounsaturated fatty acids. But what we wanna focus on mainly with olive oil is the fact that it has something known as oleic acid in it. Now, avocado oil also has oleic acid. You may see on the labels of some things like sunflower uh, or high oleic sunflower oil or things like that, not quite the same. So oleic acid converts into something known as OEA, oleolanethanolamine. Now, I'll explain more about that, but here's what happens. When you consume oleic acid or olive oil, there's a two-step enzymatic process. The first set of enzymes comes in and it breaks down oleic acid into another set. Okay, then another group of enzymes comes in and it breaks it down even further into this OEA. Now, when you look at the research, you see that there's a direct correlation with the amount of oleic acid that's coming in the body and the amount of OEA in the blood. Well, there's not a transporter for this OEA. It just turns out that it actually spills over when it's getting enzymatically converted. It spills over into the peripheral tissues. Kind of fascinating from a nerdy science way, but it might not be that interesting to you. But why is OEA so cool? Well, it's because it binds to a transcription factor known as PPAR alpha. Now, again, nerdy stuff, but let me put this into perspective for you. When you do some intermittent fasting, one of the things that elevates the most is PPAR alpha, okay? It is a transcription factor that allows a lot of lipid mobilization, okay? It's heavily involved in lipid transportation. So whenever we are fasting, we want PPAR alpha to be elevated, and it generally is. Well, it turns out that oleic acid, which you'll find in olive oil, does bind to that transcription factor of PPAR alpha, which ends up causing PPAR alpha to bind to its response element in the DNA. What this means is it's gonna trigger the expression of these genes that are heavily involved in lipid transport. So we're looking at genes like uncoupling protein two. We're looking at genes like CD36. Okay, uncoupling protein two makes it so that you essentially are generating more body heat. It's allowing the browning of white fat to occur. So at a genetic level, we could be potentially changing our fat to become more thermogenic. White fat just hangs out on your body, doesn't really do much other than insulate, 
Brown fat is metabolically active and actually generates heat. So this PPAR alpha could indirectly stimulate uncoupling protein two, which triggers our fat to create more heat. That is really cool because that means it's just incinerating calories effectively. CD36, which also gets expressed, another genetic level, is something that is involved in lipid transportation. So CD36 is a lipid, it's a fat mover. So if we elevate CD36 or express CD36, we move fat. Then of course, there's also the binding to what is called the TRPV receptor, which has to do with satiation. So ultimately, olive oil is extremely, extremely satiating. Now, what's interesting is there was a study that was published in the journal uh, Progress in Lipids that took a look at mice. And with these mice, they were what are called knockout mice. These knockout mice didn't have the enzyme that could convert oleic acid into OEA. Turns out these mice suffered from inflammation, they suffered from obesity, and a whole range of metabolic issues. So evidently, this OEA is actually quite critical. If we don't have the set of enzymes that would normally allow this OEA to be created from oleic acid in the diet, well, we could fall victim to obesity, right? So this is really wild stuff. Now, FYI, this is obviously a big part of a Mediterranean keto lifestyle. We do have a Mediterranean keto cookbook that is coming out this fall or winter. So I just want everyone to keep locked in and keep it tuned in because this is going to be really cool, the Mediterranean keto cookbook. Anyhow, random plug there. Okay, now let's jump over to the polyphenol side of things. Fats are not created equal. Olive oil is unique because it has a bunch of different polyphenols that have different effects. Okay, it has 36 of them, but we're going to focus on two oleocanthal and hydroxytyrosol. These are my two favorite. Now, the reason that I focus on oleocanthal is because I'm focused on inflammation, right? Inflammation is a big part of my life. When I went through my transformation, when I went from 285 pounds to where I am now, a lot of my focus was on, well, where can I remove or reduce inflammation, right? Well, anyway, there's a study that was published in the journal Nature that demonstrated that oleocanthal can inhibit what is called COX enzymes, cyclooxygenase enzyme activity. Again, to put matters into just uh, perspective so you can get a picture painted, ibuprofen is supposed to block cyclooxygenase enzyme activity. Now, I'm not saying that olive oil is a replacement for ibuprofen, not at all, but I am saying it works along the same mechanism. So if you understand that ibuprofen modulates inflammation, well, then we see that oleocanthal modulates inflammation via the same pathway. Not necessarily to the same degree, but it gives you that picture there. Now, let's move over to hydroxytyrosol. Okay, so it's one thing to have a fat coming in. It's another thing to have a fat that is fairly stable, that isn't gonna cause a lot of issues. It's another thing to have a fat that is not only stable, but also comes with its own army of antioxidants to prevent it from becoming unstable. Okay, so this is where hydroxytyrosol comes in. Hydroxytyrosol is 10 times more effective as an antioxidant than green tea is. Now, hydroxytyrosol, of course, is coupled with olive oil, so you get the fat plus the antioxidants. Unlike with green tea, you're just getting the antioxidants, right? Well, this one's particularly interesting to me because being 285 pounds for a while, I have a lot of joint injuries. So you can see when you look at the research, there's some evidence that shows that hydroxytyrosol can stimulate chondrocyte regeneration. Chondrocytes are in the cartilage. So we want to stimulate the regeneration of chondrocytes because that potentially shows that cartilage can be regenerated. Now, I'm not saying that this has been the reason I've been able to become active after being sedentary, but it could play a pretty big role. Now, additionally, when we look at brain inflammation, we look at uh, mood, everything like that, a lot of antioxidants can't cross through the blood-brain barrier because we have that protective sheath in our brain, right? Well, again, interestingly enough, hydroxytyrosol has the ability to cross through the blood-brain barrier, making it a pretty darn powerful antioxidant that could have some cool effects on the brain. So this isn't to say you need to guzzle, guzzle, guzzle olive oil, but add a little bit throughout the day and, and compound it with the other six high-fat superfoods that we'll talk about in time, you're gonna have just your playbook for the healthiest fats that are out there. So I appreciate you keeping it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you in the next video.